Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and in this video, we're going to get to the root of what causes imposter syndrome so we can cure your imposter syndrome. Let's get started now. So you may already know what imposter syndrome is, but essentially imposter syndrome is the feeling of not belonging somewhere. You feel like you're not good enough and you feel like you're an imposter in that situation. You kind of feel like you're not good enough and eventually everyone's going to find out that you're not good enough and then they're going to expose you, get rid of you, fire you, whatever it is that you're afraid of. You think that they're going to find out that you don't actually belong and don't deserve it and they'll kick you out. And that's the whole root of imposter syndrome. To give you a bit of an example of what imposter syndrome looks like, we'll take an example of my life when I was first learning to program. I learned about programming for the very first time my senior year in high school, had no idea what programming was, didn't even know it existed until then, and I really, really enjoyed it. I programmed for like a week in high school my senior year, and then I changed my major to be that for when I went to college. I didn't do any programming up until I went to college after that, so I had one week of experience programming, that's it. And when I got to college, I decided to take the honors computer science introduction class that everybody has to take, but I decided to do the honors version because I was in the honors program. So I figured, why not? This is for my major. And wow, was I in over my head. Everybody in that class had been programming since they came out of the womb. I feel like they were just absolute computer experts. They were completely bored by the course material and I was way over my head. I was struggling just to keep up. I was having to study all the time, take lots of notes, pay attention in class. It was really difficult for me. And I really felt like I didn't belong because everybody else there clearly knew what was going on. They were very bored in class and I was barely able to keep up. Even though I was able to keep decent grades in the class, I constantly felt like people were going to figure out that I was barely scraping by when these tests came around and that I was just barely able to study enough information to do well on the test right before it happened. While all these other people seemed like they just came into class, took the test, left, no problem at all. It was just a cakewalk for them. But the thing I didn't realize is is that the only people that I paid attention to and noticed were the people that found the content really, really easy to learn. These people that have been programming for a long time or just had a natural you know, knack for it. These are the people that I noticed in class because they were the most vocal. They were the people that were just the most noticeable, the people that you kind of look up to and want to be more like. And what I realized is all the other people that were like me, they were quiet. They didn't really talk much. They were just paying attention and taking notes the whole time. But you don't notice those people because they kind of fade into the background behind these more prevalent people that are doing very well which is I think a lot of where imposter syndrome comes from because you see all these other people that are doing something that you find difficult, but you don't actually see the people that are struggling just as much as you. So you think everybody must be as good as these people that are doing well and nobody is doing as bad as you are. And that's what you feel like when in actuality, there's only a few people that are doing really well and the majority of other people are struggling along with you trying to learn this new thing. This is why a lot of social media platforms such as Twitter can be very difficult for people that are trying to learn a new topic or just starting out because they just see tons of people who are absolutely killing it and know so much in their particular topic. They have their one niche that they're really good at. So when you come in and try to learn that one particular technology, you're just surrounded by experts and it makes you feel like everyone's an expert when in actuality, there's only a few people that are experts, but they speak louder than anyone else. You have to realize that there's a whole community of people that are just like you, just trying to learn whatever you're starting with. And those are the kind of people that you need to find and resonate with because they'll help build you up together. You'll be able to build each other up and realize that you all are good at what you're doing. You're just in the learning process while these louder, more outspoken people are already experts in that scenario. It doesn't mean that they know the same things that you know, though. Let's say that you know React and this other person knows Vue and you're trying to learn Vue. You may feel like you're not as good as this person that knows Vue and you may feel inferior because you think they know everything you know plus Vue. But in actuality, they probably don't know React. They just know Vue and that's why they're so good at it. So you're better at React than them, but they're better at Vue than you. And that's completely okay. You need to realize that you don't have to be an expert at absolutely everything because web development is a massive topic. My entire YouTube channel is built around only web development and there's no way that I could cover everything in web development throughout the entire existence of my channel. That's just how big web development is, which means it's perfectly okay not to know everything. It's actually expected that you don't know everything because if you knew everything, you would know almost nothing of anything because you would have such a shallow grasp of knowledge on these particular topics. That's why I find it much more important to just stick with a few things and learn those few things and become really good at those few things. That'll A, help with your imposter syndrome because you'll realize that you're starting to become an expert in your particular topics that you chose, but it'll also make it really much easier for you to learn since you won't have to be focused on learning so many different things at once. Now, if we jump back to my story that I was telling earlier about my first class in college that I was struggling through, I just pushed and pushed and pushed myself through the class 
learning and learning and learning and studying until I finally started to get a good grasp of these technologies. And I realized that it didn't actually take me too long to start to get to the level of these other people in the class that I assumed were experts because they knew these things that were so difficult for me. And that's the kind of thing with web development. There's moments where you just kind of hit a breaking point where you break through and you realize that you just start to understand everything so much better and you feel so much better about yourself, especially when you're surrounded by other people that are learning. You all are starting to hit these breakthrough points. It's really encouraging and motivating. And that really went well for me for a really long time. I got my first internship and I felt great there. I felt like I was doing really well until I started my first full-time job out of my internship. And I realized again that I was way over my head with the people I was working with. They were all absolute experts in what they were doing. And it was a programming language I had never used in my entire life before. So I felt very over my head. But I realized at that moment that that's the best situation I could put myself in. I was surrounded by people smarter than me, which meant it was so easy for me to learn. I had a ton of smart people around me that I could constantly ask questions to, constantly get feedback from, and constantly learn from. And that's why I actually think it's important that you feel a little bit of imposter syndrome. You feel like you are surrounded by people that are smarter than you. Because if you are the smartest person in the room, then you have nobody to learn from and you'll eventually just stagnate. But if you're surrounded by people that are smarter than you, then you have people to constantly learn from. And that was the thing I loved about going from my internship to my full-time job, is that when I was in my internship, I was one of the better people there. I'd been there much longer than most of the people. I'd been doing really well for a long time. And most of the people there didn't really care about learning or improving themselves. So I didn't really have a lot of people to look up to and improve. When I moved to my full-time job and I was surrounded by all these people so much better than me, I was able to improve so much quicker. And that first six months to a year of my full-time job, I learned more than I did in my entire four years of school and everything else that I had led up to that point. It was absolutely incredible what being surrounded by these smart people can do. So even if you feel a little bit of imposter syndrome, just realize it's not that you don't belong, it's that the people that you're with are just incredibly smart and talented in something that you may not be. And you can help them in the areas you're talented, and they can help you in the areas that they're talented. I mean, just the very fact that you're on YouTube, watching videos that are educational, trying to learn more about whatever topic you're trying to learn about, that proves that you're already better than most of the developers out there. Because most developers, they get their first job, they go to work, they leave, and they never try to improve themselves. So the fact that you are here trying to improve yourself means already that you are better than most other people out there, and you will eventually become an expert in whatever you're trying to learn. And one last thing before I go, if you are struggling from imposter syndrome and you want to find a group of people that are like you, trying to learn and working to become better, make sure you join my Discord channel, which is linked in the description below where you're going to be surrounded by other like-minded people that are all learning together, and I'll also be there to try to help you along your journey of learning web development. And with that out of the way, I really hope I was able to help you overcome your imposter syndrome, or at least find ways that you can confront it over time. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos, which are going to be linked over here, and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.